Back in my designer, I select the admin user underneath of permissions and here we are and I get the overview page. The overview page is of interest, especially because it helps me to identify which type of user I have. First of all, it is not a read only user. We will talk about that flag in seconds. Secondly, there are directly assigned permission groups 37, which just give us some permission. Additionally to that, in the second blue box, you see the complete amount of working permission group. What did that mean? The first box shows you the direct assigned permission groups, but these permission groups can have nested permission groups and the permissions configured for these permission groups will, because of the nesting, as well have effect for that specific system. And this shows the second box. The second box is a collection out of the direct assigned permission groups plus all the others who are just nested where the permissions will work as well, but who are maybe not directly assigned. What I can see on the right side are, are three green bubbles, one per front end. There is one for the designer. This says this admin user do have the following particular permissions just in designer. The same for the launchpad and the same for the manager. What is that now in detail? As you remember, there is a dialogue in designer in the same way then there is a dialogue in launchpad or in the manager. I'm talking about the stuff here on the left side and the filters here. This stuff is defined somewhere as well and this is the database. And to get access to all of these features implemented in that front end, that means to open forms or to see filter dialogues or filter notes or something like that, I need permissions. And these permissions are defined for the manager right in this box. These are the permission groups and for the launchpad right here and for the designer right here. That means this overview allows me to say, okay, this specific admin system user do have the following permissions in front ends. That means the following dialog permissions and the following permission groups assigned. Next step is to look into the properties of such or specific system users. Two ways to do that. The first way is I just can click here in the middle and I get this specific view. And in this specific view, I can directly look into that. Another way to do it is just to click on the system user here and to select my system user from the list. If I do so, I can see the property grid. Now it's up to you which of the views you like to prefer. And I'm nearly sure you will prefer not that dirty grid here. You are more preferring the nice view you can see if you just select one of these system users. This is my admin user we created before. As you can easily see on the screen, there is the assignment of all of the permission groups on the upper side of the form and on the lower side of the form, there are the properties. And the properties itself shows me the name of the user. This is the admin user. I can modify the password if I like to. And this is what I like to explain next. First, the read only flag. The read only flag says that if it is set that all stuff that this user will see cannot be modified. Read only is something we called in the past the boss flag. That means I create a very detailed dialogue which allows us to do nearly everything. And then just for the boss, I set the read only flag as the only existing overruling flag. And with that flag set, whatever else the dialogue was able to do before, it is only possible to watch things, but it is not possible to modify anything. It's absolutely amazing, especially if you want to give your boss a quick view of everything, but you like to prevent that he will start to change something. The second flag is something we saw before. This is the admin user flag. This is responsible that every of these new permission groups will be automatically assigned. It is only something for a small group of people, as you can truly trust me. Service accounts is another flag. This is a flag that is set to any of the system users who are not configured to work with front ends. The service account flag is set for amount of system users could be used from other systems to access the identity manager. Once the flag is set, it is not possible to sign in anymore. For all the people who love just the grid view, they can click here on the tab extend and then they will get the same grid than you saw in the other view in the list editor before. With that, from my perspective, this view here is the best view to be used. And the only flag we have not discussed, it's now the external password management flag. This is something we will discuss later in another security video. After we saw some of the system user properties, now let's talk about the existing system users. In designer, if I open system users, here's a couple of users. 
Especially there are some web application servers and web update users. They already are here because they was auto generated by the standard web portal, for example. You can absolutely ignore them. And the reason for it is there is something in the name that looks like a UID without the dashes. This is very typical for auto generated users. All of the others, that means from this system user for IT shop up to our created admin users are standard system users. And these standard system users can be used, for example, to sign in. Only one exception, and this exception might be the flag, it's a service user. To look into that, remember, you have to see if there is a flag service account set. If that happens, then this one, it's a service user and cannot be used for any login. For example, SA, it's something like that. Synchronization either, as well, the service account user. We talked a little bit about different authenticators for different purpose, and there were some for system purpose as well. And these are the according system users then later on can be used. In addition to the standard set of system users, which is that one here, you will find something that is called dynamic users. Dynamic users only exists if there is a role-based login somewhere. And this is something we discussed in one of the past videos of the first part, where I told you that for any role-based permission set, a new system user will be auto-generated so that the system itself at the end can map that automatically to an identity to ensure that all the permissions are set. And this system, as you can see here, is right now not one of these system user created. And the reason is I was not logging in role-based in that database before. One more feature could be of interest. Let us take our admin system user again and let's step into the edit screen where I can see for that specific system user all the standard properties we normally will set and all the permission groups I can assign or remove. Remember, for the admin user, I cannot disconfigure here these groups because they get auto assigned. Nevertheless, there is one more tab I can show you and that is the tab that says this system user might be somewhere assigned to a specific person object. And as you can see, for that specific system user, there is nowhere an assignment. Let's modify that so that you can see what I mean. Therefore, I step into the manager and in the manager, I select some employees. I just select some of them. And now I click on tasks and here change master data. And for these five objects, I just open now the edit page. I step to miscellaneous and here I can assign a system user and I will do that. I will assign the admin user. I can as well set a password and I'm done. We saw that talking about the identity related authentication module. That means the employee authentication module that is implemented in the identity manager. What I like to show you right now knowing that this assigned admin user, it's not an account that is assigned to the identity. It is just a permission set, which is assigned to the identity. But what I like to show you now is back in designer that this view here will have changed. I cannot see the difference right now. And the reason for that is that at present, I'm working on a copy of my configuration data. And to get the new information, I have just to close the database connection and to replace it by a new data connection. And after my designer is back, I can just jump to my system user again. Therefore, I have to go to permissions first, system user. Here's the system user, admin user. I jump in. And what you can see now is the number of assigned people. So this is a good place as well just to check which people will have that specific particular system user, admin user assigned. And these are the five we configured. What I cannot do here on that screen, by the way, is to add other users or to remove them. This is just for your information so that you know uh, which identities will have this permission set assigned. If there's nothing to see like before, it's just a system user without being used as a role to get permissions.